G'day guys, welcome back to the Truth Footy YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a February edition of AFL Would You Rather. You guys have been fantastic this off season in helping me out come up with some content for these types of videos. So what I did is went to Instagram and I asked you for suggestions for AFL Would You Rathers that I will answer in this video. We did a version about a month ago and we'll do one more I reckon before the preseason action kicks off. Just as an aside, I've organized a playlist called AFL Offseason Fun Videos where I've got the two Would You Rathers in there. I've got Reacting to Your Bold Predictions and I've also got AFL Unpopular Opinions all in that playlist. So if you want to sort of binge that kind of content, it's all good fun and it's all organized in one place. So I've put it, if you hit the top right icon of this video, you can find all that stuff. So if you missed the first one, uh, AFL Would You Rathers, the premise of it is you throw me a scenario or two scenarios and I've got to pick which one I would rather choose between the two that you've given me. As usual, you guys have come through with the goods and you've got some great ones for me today. And I have to say some of you, it has to be said, are kind of sadistic. But without further ado, let's crack into the content. So the first one is from Riles Macker who asks, would I rather Oscar Allen wins the Coleman or Harley Reid wins the Rising Star? This is a positive one. Thank you, Riles. I think for me, a Coleman probably would would really solidify Oscar Allen as an elite player, hypothetically, if he won it. The Rising Star, I think, by comparison, probably means less. It doesn't really indicate that a player is going to become something. So I'm, I'd happily forego Harley Reid winning the Rising Star if it meant that Oscar Allen won the Coleman medal. Because Harley Reid could still go on and be a fantastic player. If Oscar Allen wins the Coleman, then it means he's arrived. Would I rather a midfield with flair and impact but low touches or a ball magnet with consistency? Now, this one is tricky because some of the best players in the game are ball magnets with consistency. Like one of the best ones that comes to mind is Lockie Neal. He's a ball magnet with consistency, but probably has less impact per possession and less flair. At the risk of fence sitting, I'd probably say that a good midfield needs both. I don't think you can have all players in a midfield just be ball magnets with a consistency, nor can they all be low possession players with high impact. So a midfield of like, say, Luke Shuey comes to mind because I think he typifies a flair but low possession player. And and you couldn't probably also have a really good midfield if your entire midfield was Lockie Neal. So with that being said, what would I rather? I, I do probably think the truly high impact players per possession are a little bit harder to come by. That being said, you know, if, if I was using the Shuey comparison, I'd, you'd, you'd say Lockie Neal's had the better career. But Bontempelli is probably a player that is lower possession but higher impact. So, oh, that's a tough one. I'd probably find it harder to pick a really good high impact player, they're probably harder to come by and that's probably who I'd choose. The first few of these do have a bit of a West Coast flavor, but I do promise they're not all West Coast ones. But Milo, Milo Heffernan says, have West Coast fold or relocate or have five Fremantle premierships by 2034. This one is sick. This one is absolutely sick. Um, okay, so first of all, folding and relocating are two very different things. Um, you know, if, if West Coast, was relocated to Tassie, I, I would still support them, hypothetically. So I could probably, probably prefer that to Fremantle winning five premierships because that would effectively take them past West Coast. So, you know, Fremantle winning one premiership, sure, but five premierships, that's insane, Jeremy. Four none, Jeremy. Four. That's insane. So, uh, ooh, you know, I'll, I'd say I'd rather relocate than have that happen. That being said, I wouldn't accept West Coast folding. If the choice was West Coast folding, they are the pride and joy of my life. So I would tolerate five Fremantle premierships. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. And Slay says, be a long-term North Melbourne or Fremantle player in a 2024 context. Fremantle probably have, well, the, the, for a start, they're in Perth. So maybe ignore the fact that I'm a Perth local. So that would be a factor for sure. Fremantle, I think, have better facilities. I think they actually have pretty top-notch facilities. So that's kind of a factor too. Playing it up the stadium as opposed to uh, Marvel Stadium, I think is also a plus for Fremantle. North Melbourne do have, you know, you know, a better history. They were the team of the 90s. They've won four uh, AFL, VFL premierships. They've also got Alistair Clarkson and some exciting youth there as well. Also, for a plus side for them, they don't wear purple. That is a tough one. Of course, I'm going to have an Eagles flavor to this with a bit of bias in it as well. I'm probably going to say North Melbourne. Nicholas R43 asked Cody Waitman or Jack Ginnivan. I think Cody Waitman is the clear answer here. I, I think he is pretty much already a bit of a gun. Like you look at his output for the age years, what was he, 2018 draft or maybe 2019? I can't remember exactly, but you know, putting up consistent numbers, I think the second leading goal kicker for the Bulldogs off the top of my head behind Aaron Norton. Uh, Ginevan has had one really good season and then didn't quite back it up and still might be a good player, but I think Waitman has more tricks. I think Waitman is a better player. 
I like this one from Zen Ronaldo, who asks, have every game in the final round played at the same time or keep it the same? So for those unaware, that's how the English Premier League do it. And, you know, the season is decided on the final round of the, the season. And it's interesting because some teams are playing and they don't know the results of the other games as well. So the, the trade-off here is that it could be more exciting because if you're playing in a game, you don't know the result of the other one. You don't know whether they're in the finals, but also for the fans watching, it's all happening at the same time. So it's kind of overstimulating, but it is exciting. We've seen the Premier League end in really dramatic fashion. I think of, um, you know, Aguero a few years ago. And what it does do is eliminate any dead rubbers. So, you know, sometimes the final day of the AFL season will have some dead rubbers because the Saturday games, you know, went a certain way. That being said, I would still probably like to be able to watch all of the games. If they're all on at the same time, you are pretty much consigned to just watching your team play and you might miss a lot of the drama at the end of the season. So uh, I would probably keep it the same, but it is a good suggestion. It's not a bad idea at all. Mason Batesy, have Matthew Nix or Sam Mitchell as your head coach? Hmm, tricky one. Both good coaches, both, uh, I would say, different stages of their, you know, rebuild or push up the ladder, if you will. But one thing I noticed with both is I, th I think both coaches effectively got these teams to play a little bit above their weight. And I, you know, maybe not so much Adelaide in 2023, like their team, their best 22 is starting to take shape and is actually a good team to begin with. But maybe a few years ago when he first took over, I think I noticed how quickly he started to get them playing a fairly attractive style of play and the players looked committed and there was, there was a real energy and spirit to the way they play. And that's what I'd say it kind of is a good sign of a good coach. And equally, you know, what Sam Mitchell did with Hawthorne this year, to win six games and, you know, knock off Collingwood, you know, smash West Coast in the way that they did. There was some real growth from there and you look at how young that team is and it's very impressive. I would probably just err on the side of Sam Mitchell, but probably just because, you know, with his impact at West Coast and the fact that he seems to be a bit of a tactical genius, that's probably where I'd lean, but you know, Matthew Nix is just as good a coach, it seems, right now. Geordie Bishop has another good coaching one. Would I rather be Damien Hardwick or Adam Uze going into 2024? I don't think there's too much doubt that Hardwick is equipped with a much more talented young team than Adam Uze is right now. Now that could change. Adam Uze could, you know, revitalize this Richmond team. Uh, but I think it's fair to suggest that their young talent is nowhere near as proven as Gold Coast. That being said, with Gold Coast, you sort of absorb some of the baggage around them never actually really delivering on that potential. But I think there's a lot more players there about to hit their straps. And I think conversely with Richmond, you know, maybe maybe they have a season where their senior players fire and, they, and they're genuinely competitive in 2024. But then I look a few years ahead and I think Richmond are coming from a long way back. Just obviously went two drafts as well without first round draft picks. I think, it's, I think Adam Uze has got a really difficult task ahead of him. And uh, it would be very, very interesting to see how competitive he gets Richmond to be in 2024. Because the next phase, the next part of the transition is going to be really testing for him. And I would hope that Richmond show him the patience that that will deserve. So he answered your question, I'd rather be Damien Harvey right now. Seb Vanders with another Eagles Dockers one. Eagles finished bottom in 2024 or Dockers finished uh, top four. I'm kind of already embracing the possibility we might finish the wooden, with the wooden spoon. So I wouldn't be willing to see you know, Freeman will make the top four simply to see us finish 17th. Now, I'm not obsessed with where Freeman will finish. Like, I, I don't really care that much. I, I don't really want to see them win a premiership. Uh, that being said, for the sake of just finishing one spot higher on the ladder, uh, I'd rather the Dockers didn't finish top four. Raz894 says, Nick Nat have an injury-free career or Ben Cousins have a controversy-free career? This is great. You know, from a personal well-being point of view, if I could reverse Ben Cousins' drug addiction, I would. Like, that is the noble thing to do. However, if we're just saying, he, you know, he didn't get in trouble for it publicly and played out the rest of his days at West Coast, I think West Coast probably had more to gain from Nick Nat um, having an injury-free uh, career. Like, he went through so much and was still a gun player. Three All-Australians, two of them in his last two seasons basically as well would either of them have led to another Eagles premiership I think not I think not I think you know we won one in 18 without Nick so it was fine um, and we wouldn't want to have won one in 17 or 23 with Nick so either way it didn't matter same thing with Cuz you know once we lost Judd I don't think the Eagles would have been really in the mix for a premiership after 07. We might not have fallen away as badly as we did, but but we also did get a huge chunk of Ben Cousins' career before that all happened, and he won a Brownlow, and uh, you know was a gun player for a long time, and it felt like we were probably robbed of a little, more, a little bit more of Nick Nat's prime. So I'd say Nick Nat. Ben Herbert says, West Coast get Buzzlinger and give up draft collateral or keep the picks. Uh, so would I trade for Jed Buzzlinger? Yeah, I would. I mean, it's hard to answer this specifically without 
you know, talking what specifically we'd give up. As it currently stands, what's Buzzlinger worth? You know, if he's out of contract, doesn't play a single game this year, probably a top 20 pick, you know, I think, uh, you know, I know he was, I think he was pick 14 and, you know, seems like a good prospect, but at the same time, if he, he gets to the end of a two-year contract and he hasn't played a single game, that he, he's not worth more than what he was drafted for. So yeah, I would I would go for Buzzlinger. I, I'd probably offer like something in the top twenty. Uh, whether we have a pick in that range is uh, completely yet to be seen. I am reading these in chronological order. There's a few more Eagles and Dockers ones, but then whether there's some more broad ones, which I'm excited to get into. Ben Williams says, you get drafted by Frio. Do you kick the game winner against the grand final versus West Coast, or do you miss so West Coast would win? Um, you know, if, if I'm actually a player and considering my own personal legacy here, I wouldn't throw a game just to see West Coast win. I think the, the truth of the matter is, if I was drafted by Fremantle and had a 10-year career, I'd probably end up hating West Coast. That being said, if you just beam me into the body of a random Fremantle player and I had the control of that kick, I'd probably <laughs> deliberately miss it. But yeah, not if it was actually me personally. Jack Bleach says, Geelong or Hawthorne this year? Good question. So if we're just talking the context of this season, I think Geelong finish higher. And uh, my opinions have been swirling around this preseason. I think I think they actually might be half decent this year. And I, But I think Hawthorne will be better in a few years, most likely, unless Geelong pull like, some sort of amazing list management maneuver where they get more star players. That's possible. Uh, but for the context of who finishes higher this year, I'd say Geelong. Jimmy Krez says, losing both derbies by a combined 300 points and avoiding the spoon or winning both derbies and getting the spoon. Uh, I don't care that much about the spoon. I would not want to win, lose the derbies by a combined 300 points. So I'd rather win both derbies and get the spoon. That being said, I don't care so much about derbies. Like if you said West Coast make finals, but they lose both derbies, I would choose that. Then we got Nate Rasmussen. Would you rather win three flags in a row or, f- or four over seven years? Uh, this is funny because Hawthorne did both. Uh, I don't care so much about the three-peat. I think an extra flag would, would do me nicely. I Zaska, sorry if I've, I don't know if I've written this down wrong or if I'm just reading it wrong. Uh, but he says, Jack Steele or Zach Merritt? I think you have to go with Zach Merritt. Uh, Jack Steele at his absolute top is probably closer to being in the real top handful of players, like at his prime. And I know he's been uh, dealing with injuries over the last few years. That being said, Zach Merritt's been consistently good for a long period of time. So you pr- you'd probably go Zach Merritt's had a better career so far. Ben Williams says, play one game on Prime Buddy or try and tag Prime Dusty for a game. This is a great question. I think as a player who would get annihilated by both of these players, I think it would be less embarrassing playing on the midfield on Dusty because you could kind of get lost in traffic a little bit more. And if he's tearing it up, you, they might be like, ah, oh, who's on Dusty? And they might not know. Uh, that being said, if I'm one-on-one with du- uh, Buddy Franklin in the goal square and he leaves me for Dust, everyone on a live national audience would be able to see that unfold. So I'd rather play on Dusty. <laughs> We've got a few from Ben Williams. He says, bring back yearly international rules or state of origin. I like the international rules because they were very competitive and it's kind of more fascinating. State of origin is great in concept, but they don't really... Now that I think about it, they don't really play with any full intensity. Or well, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. If you gave me a genuine state of origin comp where, you know, there was lots of pride on the line and players were taking it seriously, I'd probably get more into that. Would I rather receive $1 million personally, but my club doesn't play finals for 20 years? That's brutal. That is dark. I think I would forego the $1 million. I think West Coast is too important to my life enjoyment it's not even just about success but it, like knowing that my club wouldn't play for finals for 20 years nah I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to do that keep your million dollars Ben AFL Guernsey says play one AFL season and win one premiership or play 10 AFL seasons and never play finals so the, the trade off here is if I play 10 F- AFL seasons I'm probably going to be pretty well paid I, I suppose not necessarily but you know what are the if you play 10 years you're probably on six figures minimum um, you know, that's that's not nothing to sneeze at. Uh, that being said, winning a premiership and being a premiership player, you could probably leverage that really well into a post-football career. Uh, you know, I could. it would probably help true footy if I was a premiership player. Even though I played AFL for, for 10 years, I'd say, I'd say I'd rather win the premiership and, and, and then dip into something else. Have the first pick in the draft or have picks two and three? This is contextual. I'd, I'd say 2023 was the first year you could really debate that because in most years, two and three is better. I would even say that I probably would have had two and three this year over pick one on its own. I think that's too valuable. 
Which injury would I rather? A Nathan Brown broken leg or Andrew Brayshaw broken jaw? That's hard. That is dark as well. I don't know, man. They're both horrible injuries. I, I've never really broken a bone, so I don't really know what would be worse. Like, broken jaw would probably affect your eating for a while. Um, and his teeth were cooked as well. But a broken leg, I feel like might be painful potentially for the rest of your life. Like, not deeply painful, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nathan Brown still has pain from that. Um, when people break their legs really badly. Oh, man. I don't really know. I don't really know. If, if, if I was assured that my teeth would be rectified and back to normal, I'd probably go with that one. But if my teeth are cooked permanently... Then I'd go with the broken leg. That's a horrible one. That's horrible. Jacob Phillips says, uh, see Harrison Jones or Nate Caddy in the center half forward line in round one. You know, it's funny. I'm an outsider looking at Essendon. I, I would have thought that their tall setup starts Langford, Stringer, and Peter Wright. So I, I, I imagine there's a few people out there a little bit off on Stringer, so maybe that's who they're talking about. That, that's the three I would go with. That being said, past that, I think Nate Caddy, I'm excited to see him. Like, I think he could actually play fairly well because he can sort of roll through the midfield a little bit. He's not going to be a genuine on-baller. I don't think that's realistic, but he could play higher up the ground and still impact as an 18-year-old. So from the outside looking in, I would go Nate Caddy, but I'm interested to see what Essendon fans think about that. And the final one, Jay Stee says, know the result of every game ahead of time or never have your team win again. Well, congrats. You just ruined football. <laughs> in both of these situations, there's ruined football. There's no way I can choose to have West Coast never win a game again. Uh, so I suppose I'm left with know the result of every game ahead of time. Um, and that would ruin a lot of the fun of it. But that is clearly the, the choice between those two. But anyway, guys, that is my AFL Would You Rathers. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my choices. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're keen, guys, let me know if you want me to do this again. I'll probably do this like once a month particularly as the season starts. But, um, you know, I, d I don't want to be necessarily just making the videos that get views all the time. So if you do actually enjoy this and you get value out of it, um, leave a like and a comment. And I know that also helps me in the algorithm, but it does, like, that is the sort of stuff I look at more than just the views. So as always, I do appreciate your input. It's been a great off-season. We're very close to the preseason starting. And uh, for now, I'll say goodbye, and I thank you very much. Cheers.